so thank you uh, again for the invitation. We're really honored to be here speaking with you today and presenting a, a bit of information on how we see digital security architecture. Um, so we've got a couple of facts to go through today. I am, of course, um, my name is Liam Wright, and I'm joined here today by Jalal, who is one of our consulting uh, team and product uh, specialists. So Jalal, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Liam, and hello, everyone. My name is Jalal Banai, a consultant in Evolution Software. And normally, as it kind of in a daily basis uh, during the last two, three years, actually, I'm talking with the, with the clients to help them to, to address those EA um, questions or uh, problems, actually. And this is actually uh, uh, like including the uh, server security and security questions and uh, uh, problems in the context of enterprise architecture. So today, yeah, uh, Liam and I are going to through a bit of more, uh, uh, I mean, uh, sharing the experiences and the aspects of it, uh, the way that we're going to cover it. Perfect. Thanks, Jalal. All right. So we do have a couple of items on our agenda today, which we'll go through. So first and foremost, of course, enterprise architecture and, and digital cybersecurity. We'll take a look at everything from a high level. We'll touch on a few cybersecurity frameworks, which we've seen being adopted in the market, um, obviously by our clients, but also in general, we keep a close eye on trends and how things are being uh, developing uh, at the coalface, so to speak. We will also take a look at enterprise architecture and you know, enterprise architecture security as well. So how those two things coalesce. And then uh, we'll have a bit of a, a deep dive into the NIST cybersecurity framework in particular, um, which is probably one of the more popular ones, as well as a partial in product demonstration. So you can see how that might be applied um, in a real world uh, scenario. Um, but before we move on, uh, just to get us underway, I guess, uh, Jalal, we should probably talk about um, what we're seeing in the market. And I guess um, one of the key places to start is with one of the international bodies. So I think it's the IS. ACA, I might be pronouncing that wrong or saying that wrong, um, but one of the big journals out there, they've been quoted as saying, you know, the aim of digital security architecture is to combine good practice from the key guiding standard um, that's shaping cybersecurity. Um, and I'll also, I'll, I'll just do a quick plug here, you know, a bit of a shameless plug. We do have a, a new guide on data privacy and cybersecurity as well, which we just released literally just yesterday. So if you want to see that, uh, feel free to grab a copy or let us know. We'll send you that. But um, Jalal, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, this is actually uh, the, uh, the, the aspect of the, uh, the uh, EA that we are going to cover. And uh, maybe you just to start off uh, uh, with a bit of more uh, kind of context in here. Uh, the way that all the, the things that we are going to address with the cybersecurity and just get into that, like, as in uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, like the areas that we are going to cover. Because uh, the, main, the main things that we are going to mostly cover in here, like uh, once we're coming to, do, uh, to the cybersecurity, is about managing the risk and compliance in there. So this is, if I want to uh, list one ma main functions or one main objective to do the cybersecurity, I'll go with risk and compliance. And uh, this is actually one of the key items that we're going to cover. But uh, the point here is that we can't do that or we can't address the, the risks or manage the risk and compliance without looking at the enterprise as a whole body. So we need to, we need to consider the, uh, the all aspect of the enterprise in here, into the picture uh, to come up uh, or achieve that goal. And then obviously uh, the approach and the way that we're doing uh, to do that, because we're, we're looking at the whole picture in here and the, the whole aspect of that, we need to go uh, uh, digital. And by digital, I mean like we, we would need to have a, a structure in place, uh, which is actually helping us to see the things and uh, measure the things and uh, like uh, kind of visualize the thing. And then eventually we come up with a bit of more uh, uh, analytic approach, the way that you uh, uh, do the road mapping and uh, look at the ecosystem as a whole and come up with like a practical or a, a, a workable approach to, to cover the, uh, the cybersecurity in here. Excellent. No, well said, Jalal. Um, I think you know, if that doesn't drive home the importance of cybersecurity this year or in the present era, um, I, EY certainly have done that for us. Um, it's certainly in their board agenda for 2021. So that's a big publication they do every year. Mm -hmm. And they've said it's you know, certainly the number one um, objective, I guess, uh, for large enterprise boards out there. So you know, in their top five, they listed cybersecurity right at the very top. 
Um, and I guess we need to take a look at obviously what the key business objectives are of cybersecurity, but then also, you know, we want to talk about um, you know, how this plays um, that role within the bigger context of enterprise architecture as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the, the the key the key uh, the key objective is here is, is uh, as a as a as a great object or uh, uh, the biggest object or uh, like the the main uh, objective in here is risk and compliance. But then, like I said, the digital approach is actually the way that we are going to to achieve that. And maybe I just take you through a bit of more uh, uh, kind of journey in here, the way that we are looking at the the context uh, from digital perspective, because. Uh, the the way that we are just uh, like maybe in a, in a bit of more legacy style, we are looking at the security implementation, might not cover the the overall, or maybe might not be able to cover the whole aspect of the uh, I mean uh, to achieve the the goal in in a kind of a holistic view. So, <clears throat> I mean, uh, in in one side or and at the, at a point of time, I mean, once we are looking at the security or digital security, uh, we have two main contexts in here. Uh, obviously, digital security is the one, but then the enterprise architecture is the other one. So we need to have or see all those things together, like as uh, the different side or both two sides of the uh, the same practice. But if I go through a bit of more uh, detail about this uh, and just have a closer look at the context in here, uh, by digital security, we're uh, we're mostly dealing with different domains. So this is an example in here for different domains that you're going to cover and make the things a bit more uh, structured in here, like uh, classify with, uh, with the controls and checks which are coming with the security. Different frameworks are coming with different te terminologies, of course, like the domains or views or uh, like the, the functions or the categories. But these are the areas that normally we are going to address with uh, cybersecurity. And on the other side, we are talking about the enterprise architecture. The way that the uh, the domains are coming to the picture, and uh, for example, this is a suggestion coming from the uh, TOGAF, like the different domain of the enterprise that we are going to cover as in part of the architecture. And I mean, as part of the journey, so we need to move on a bit and come up with a bit of more visibility or analyze these two uh, side of the the coin and come up with a bit of uh, more uh, tangible or uh, I would call it like digital structure in there. And if I move one step further, the digital security will be uh, kind of drilled down into the controls, which are the items which are going to be uh, checked or uh, kind of uh, evaluate against the entities or items or um, things in the enterprise. And on the other side, we are talking about the, uh, the components or the entities or the part of the enterprise architecture. So the journey is start from a kind of big, big picture once we do, or once we just initiate the digital security. But uh, as we go uh, down and make the things like, uh, or uh, look at the things uh, in a, from a closer uh, perspective, we are coming to a same bit, bit and byte of each, uh, like each concept in here. So this is about the uh, bit of more, uh, the way that the, the digital is coming to the picture and the way that we're just seeing these two different entity actually uh, behaving the same, or uh, we are just looking them as the same, same way of like, analyzing. So <clears throat> once we come up with this sort of uh, uh, classifications or a kind of a, a, a bit of more detailed view in here, uh, maybe the next step is about like uh, we just try to uh, kind of uh, implement the digital security in an enterprise uh, for for our like uh, as like part of the enterprise architecture. So this is an example in here. Uh, the way that we break down the details of each, uh, like each concept or each context, like as in digital security and enterprise architecture, and we come up with a bit of more uh, uh, kind of actual implementation here. This is coming from one of those uh, cases that I'm going to show you, like in a bit of more details. But uh, in in this shape, it's just showing you that for each like blue box in here, which is an application. We have a, a lot of different controls that we are going to check against. So, for example, like this application, which is just sitting in here, is uh, talking to many different security uh, controls as it goes with the uh, with the framework or the uh, the uh, actually the uh, 
uh, cybersecurity framework which has been selected and the controls which have been int introduced in there. And on the other side, the elements of the enterprise architecture, which are the applications. So for any of these applications, uh, we do have one element from the digital security, which is going to address the security aspect of those entities. So it is a bit of mapping in here, the way that for any single entity in the, inter in the, in the enterprise architecture, we have uh, uh, a couple of, uh, or a, a list of controls that we need to check against and come up with, uh, uh, with the kind of uh, uh, actual digital implementation uh, for uh, like uh, do the cybersecurity in the context of the enterprise architecture. So I'll just give you a, a our feeling in here as in the, the numbers. So let's assume that we have an enterprise with like 400 application and I'm, I'm referring to the NIST framework in here, which is coming up with like uh, almost 1,000 security controls in there. So if you're going through a bit of more uh, implementing the cybersecurity for the applications only, and not other part of the enterprise, uh, of course, if you're talking about uh, like 60,000 different security check, uh, which has to be happened to come up with, uh, uh, to control or achieve that object, uh, objective, which is controlling the risks. So, um, in one side, is is a kind of huge job to do. On the other side, this is a bit of more. Um, uh, I mean, uh, the approach is quite structured and quite kind of digitized in a way that you can just come up with a proper uh, implementation in place. That's that's brilliant. I think that's a great introduction, Jalal, into what we're looking at. Um, of course, this all covers you know, a very very broad scope. I think, mm -hmm. um, and we do see variations, of course, as well with many different clients. Uh, focus on their own unique use cases. Mm -hmm. um, but you mentioned, I, I think in the last slide, views and classifications, which you know, I guess we'd all kind of refer to as, as meta models or frameworks perhaps, mm -hmm. and, and how they might play a key role um, in you know, developing some of these practices. And, and we know that there are you know, hundreds, if not thousands of different frameworks out there. Mm -hmm. um, but also similarly, there's also tools out there as well. So where do you see um, that they can help out. So how can, you know, obviously, frameworks and, and I guess EA tools in, in a larger scope help out with digital cybersecurity? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is actually uh, a, a very great kind of uh, question to answer because normally once we start off the, the journey for implementing the cybersecurity, uh, we are facing a lot of different uh, frameworks out there. So uh, the way that I, uh, I try to explain is a bit of more agnostic against the, the frameworks in our So this is about the approach, but uh, then we, uh, eventually we need to choose or we need to select a framework in place. But uh, the point here is that uh, the, uh, the, the tool that I mean, you use is also important to support a, a kind of flexibility in there. So in here, for instance, I'm, uh, I'm talking about like uh, different uh, different cybersecurity frameworks, which are coming with different terminologies, different processes in place, and different uh, type of checks or uh, classifications or uh, the, the approaches or the views or the art artifacts that they are going to, uh, to produce and introduce. But then on the other side, we are also considering the enterprise architecture as another side of the picture, which is the enterprise architecture and the framework is also uh, uh, important in there. So either you're using TOGAF, for instance, or you're using Archimate as, a, as another example, or maybe you're going to use a kind of a hybrid uh, framework in place, which is actually part of the, uh, the tool that uh, we are going to use or we're using uh, technically, or any of those other out of the box frameworks that are already available. So this is another side of the, the picture. So we have frameworks for cybersecurity. We also have frameworks for the enterprise architecture. The approach we know what we are going to do. We know we know what is the approach to, to go. So this is about a, a bit of tooling now in here, and uh, of course the process in place like uh, to start of the journey by actually uh, kind of uh, start to map and adapt the frameworks that we are uh, we are going to choose and uh, like as for cyber security framework. And uh, normally what we do is is that we start with the kind of an existing enterprise architecture framework or meta model, which has been already implemented. It's up and running technically. And then uh, this is about like uh, bringing the cybersecurity on top. So maybe this is one of the uh, one of the recommended approach that we are going through it. But uh, some uh, we've seen some customer that you're just a start of the cybersecurity. 
uh, and enterprise architecture both together. So they start with cybersecurity in practice. So, but eventually the, the thing is that we need to have a merge or a kind of a one unified meta model or uh, like a mix of frameworks, which is actually uh, addressing the, uh, the whole enterprise architecture and at the same time the cybersecurity. So once we come up with that approach, so normally we do a map and adapt the framework into, these, uh, into the enterprise architecture framework. That would be uh, technically the first step. And then we start to populate the data and relate the cybersecurity checks or controls or uh, uh, those concepts in the cybersecurity, whichever it is, like uh, into the enterprise architecture and the domains that we are going to address. So, and we also have the target in mind that we are going to manage the risks. So the, the area or the domain that we are, we are going to select is, is always a kind of a question that where, or what is the, the start point that I'm going to go with? And uh, the, this is actually the, the way that we start up, but it could be extended to other areas in our room. And hopefully if you're doing the things right, the tool will help us to go with automate all those things together in a way that uh, I come up with some some sort of uh, indicators or KPIs or uh, any, any those sort of numbers, and then that way I'll come up with a uh, with a bit of more uh, automating the practice in place for uh, do part of the job, and then <clears throat> once we have all those things together. Uh, this is a time to uh, kind of analyze and uh, come up with the road mapping or visualize the status that we are staying in and the place that we are going to be. So this is, uh, this is another aspect of that. And this is quite important as part of the, the digital move in there. And uh, this is, again, something that if we go or take the steps right, uh, I mean, based on, the, uh, based on the frameworks and mapping and uh, right data population and relating things, I think we, we're good to go to visualize the things, do the scoring, and come up with a bit of more analytics on top. And uh, the last but not the least is quite important to, uh, once we build up this uh, kind of ecosystem or structure in place, or architecture actually in place, we need to make it as a system. And by that, I mean like in a way that this is, this is a live thing uh, the, because changes are coming. New technologies are getting, getting introduced or uh, new security controls are coming in. We need to have a governance in here, the way that we, uh, we behave or we uh, like uh, maintain the changes or maintain the whole uh, architecture in there. So we, it is not a kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, autopilot type of practice. This is a very live system, which is uh, like interacting the security aspect into the enterprise aspect and come up with like a continuous, continuously evolving and developing platform that we are, we are playing with. Yeah, perfect. So mm -hmm. as you say there, make a system, right? So I think uh, actually mm -hmm. Daryl uh, has just published a book where he mentioned something similar about making a system. So um, highly recommend everyone go check that out as well. Um, Daryl, I apologize if you, you don't want me to plug that, <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> I think it's a great book. Um, but uh, I think we should explore this in a bit more detail. I think we do have some slides here to look at um, you know, how we can apply NIST over an EA framework, of course. Um, do you want to take us through that, Jalal, and how we can really implement NIST in architecture or in enterprise architecture, I should say, and, and really yeah, sort of drive home that system approach and, and how mm -hmm. we can always re-apply re, uh, 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 security to it and keep coming back to it as a sort of security first um, methodology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I have like uh, an example in here, uh, or uh, we uh, we actually selected NIST to go through it like as a bit of more uh, practical and actual implementation because we've done a lot, a lot of different uh, practices with different customers, but then uh, the, the NIST is one of those things that I, I selected to go uh, go through it. So, um, I mean, uh, a quick background, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you guys know NIST, but uh, uh, quickly, NIST is, a, is, a, a, is an organization which is just taking care of different things, including cybersecurity, and then it's coming with the list of different frameworks and different sort of uh, guidelines and uh, uh, processes in place to do the job. And uh, for today, uh, we, I, I mostly focus on NIST uh, cybersecurity framework, which is NIST CSF to address your question, uh, Lim, uh, as in like the way that you're actually kind of uh, do the things in practice and addressing the concerns in here. Uh, but uh, I just want to mention in here that the NIST is coming with different frameworks, including the NIST 853, which is a bit more into the information system. 
and uh, you have different level of implementation of that in there, like uh, based on the baseline that you're selecting to do the implementation. But uh, the NIST CSF is mostly a bit of more high level uh, sort of uh, evaluating or assessment of your enterprise architecture. The way that maybe it's a good start point to just go with NIST cybersecurity framework like CSF and uh, do a bit of more uh, kind of understanding of the, uh, the situation or uh, come up with the visibility on, on your uh, business mission objective from security perspective. And then you can continue with the uh, with a bit of more detailed implementation. So for today, I'll, I'll mostly cover the NIST CSF and show you in, in a real, uh, real uh, implementation. But if you have time, I'll touch on the uh, like this 853, a bit of more uh, implementation there and uh, just uh, try to cover that a bit as well. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> looking at the NIST as a, as a cybersecurity framework, uh, this is coming quite uh, straightforward and simple uh, with like three key elements in there that uh, they are core, uh, profile and tiers. So the core is actually the structure of the NIST cybersecurity. This is the thing that is just introducing the uh, the, uh, the controls or the functions and the categories and the, and uh, subcategories. It's just a high level uh, like uh, 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 kind of uh, architecture of the cybersecurity, if you like. And then <clears throat> we're talking about the profiles. I mean, uh, because once we have the cybersecurity framework, as we discussed, we're going to implement that and map that into the uh, into the uh, enterprise architecture and try to check those uh, cybersecurity things against the enterprise architecture things. And uh, this is uh, this is about the profiling. So you would select those uh, uh, things and in here objectives uh, that you're going to assess against and then you build up a profile for, for those things. And you can define like a profile as my current status. So the current profile, or you can you can make a profile for uh, your target, like uh, how it goes in future. So you can have multiple profile in there, and then for the profiles, we're uh, we're going to have a tier in here. The the way that the things are actually evaluated or assessed, or the compliance level is coming with the tiers in there. So I'll just give you a bit of more uh, a closer look at the tiers. The way that again the NIST is looking at the things, and <clears throat> tiers are coming with like four different uh, uh, levels. And this is a, a, about the, the mapping and the way that the NIST subcategories are mapping to the, uh, to the, uh, like the uh, security objectives that we are going to assess against. And uh, we could have like either it's partial, which is just in the earlier stage, or it's like uh, compliant uh, with the, uh, I mean, the, the, the enterprise architecture component complied with the uh, subcategory in, in, a, in a light version, if you like. But then adaptive is the uh, is is the is the status or the tier which is coming uh, let's say uh, proper uh, compliance in there. So this is actually kind of a bit of high level view of the structure of the NIST. And as an example in here, I just uh, selected one uh, one architectural entity, and we're mostly looking at the objectives, or uh, we call it like security mission objective, which are coming. And uh, the, like we do in a high level assessment of uh, enterprise architecture uh, security level. So uh, for example, the consumer digital right is one of those objectives that we are going to achieve. Like from security perspective, we're making sure that this CDR is uh, properly and securely set up. So this is one of our objective to, uh, to assess. And then on the other side, I have a subcategory in, in, uh, in NIST, which is talking about the remote access is managed. So this is, one of the checks that I need to, to go with. And then uh, the current tier is like risk info. Uh, we are staying in here, actually. This is my current business or current enterprise status. But then uh, I'll, I'll go and as a target tier, I'll go and take adaptive as a thing that I'm going to achieve. So this is actually the way that you map the things like the uh, security mission objective to the subcategories and then which is actually part of the profile and then you introduce your uh, tier in there. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going through a bit of more uh, uh, practical implementation of the NIST in an environment to again show you the, the aspect of it in, in practice. And for that, I'm, I'm going to switch on the tool that we're using, which is actually Abacus. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll present the, the things in there, like the, the steps or uh, the way that we actually do the implementation 
uh, with uh, like consider that as a pilot run. So as as I uh, try to explain, this is about the core of the uh, the NIST. So this is an implementation of the core of the NIST. And uh, the the first thing that I can I can show you in here is that it's totally uh, I mean a digital model of the NIST in place. So uh, this is a this is about like modeling the framework. And this is a framework in actually uh, an implementation of the framework in Abacus, the way that you could see the structure and the details. So maybe I just quickly show you a bit of uh, like the uh, the cybersecurity itself. The uh, these are five functions of the NIST. I'm not going through the NIST in, in overall. I'm mostly uh, covering the the aspect or the implementation aspect of that. But for instance, uh, this is one of the functions, and uh, that function is coming with like uh, categories and subcategories. So uh, this is the uh, the first or uh, the the initial step of do the modeling for the uh, framework uh, in the abacus. So this is actually what we do. And again, this is for NIST, but it could be for any other framework. So normally we are behaving the same for the other frameworks. And then on the other side, you would see that the way that the, the framework has been positioned in uh, positioned into the uh, meta model. So we discussed that we have already uh, kind of um, uh, uh, enterprise architecture framework. And if I show you the position of the uh, the position of the cybersecurity in this CSF implementation in the enterprise architecture framework, you come up with a bit of uh, better visibility in there that. For instance, in this implementation, I just try to cover the uh, like the mission objective for security in there. So this is part part of my business architecture, and I'm going to map or check the controls against those objectives. So I have some object objectives, and I have some controls, and I'm going to check them uh, like uh, where I, where am I and how I'm doing the the job from security perspective. Yeah, and in here it just uh, show you a bit of more interactive way of understanding the framework, if you like. So, for example, if I click on any of those functions, I'll come up with the uh, like the categories which are covering with that. So it's automatically filtered out. And if I go through a category in there, I'll come up uh, with the subcategories or checks which are happening in uh, NIST CSF. So I have a full visibility on the framework uh, as as a, as a kind of. Um, as a kind of uh, positioning that into the enterprise architecture and try to map or digest that into the enterprise architecture. And maybe I show you another uh, sort of uh, um, mapping concept in here because we were talking about the business security business objectives. So these are the security business objectives which has been defined as part of the enterprise architecture uh, like modeling. And then this is about the NIST uh, <coughs> subcategories in here, or checks. Uh, and there would be a practice to map any of these uh, subcategories to uh, any of these objectives. So we have like a many to many relationship in here, the way that I say that, okay, for instance, uh, this objective is applied to this, uh, this objective is going to be checked against these controls. And maybe for some of them is not applicable. Maybe for some of them it is applicable, but then uh, we, uh, we're going through a bit of more profiling in here then. So <clears throat> I just uh, show you a bit of more uh, profiling concept in there. I mean, uh, this is actually a very basic uh, current profile implementation in there. Uh, the way that we can build up a, a profile and uh, apply the tiers. So on top, the mapping has been happened. And for any uh, combination of the uh, the category or subcategory, actually, and the, the business objective, which has been uh, actually selected as part of the security, uh, cyber security planning practices, uh, we're coming with a tier in here. So this is my baseline profile and the way that I just build up my current status. Uh, in the, uh, I mean, from cybersecurity perspective. So there are lots of uh, details in here in this dashboard that uh, you can just go through it and come up with a bit of more visibility, uh, the way that the current status is uh, sitting in there. Like, for example, I see that like almost 50% of the, uh, like the controls are not uh, applicable in this status and uh, I'm not going to cover them uh, currently. So uh, this is actually one of the things or maybe uh, the like equally the other tiers are distributed and I have a bit like for 
tier four. So this is actually maybe some improvement area that I'm going to have more tier four and a bit of more uh, like the other tiers like uh, development. And then uh, this is showing you a very high level picture of the status that you're sitting in. So if you're going well and everything is fine and you're going to 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 get the objective of managing the risk 100% from security perspective, uh, this is your score that you're going to achieve. But currently you're staying like in 1,500. So we are almost 34% fulfilled with the cyber security modeling. This is actually uh, the, again, uh, flashback to the concept of the digital in there and the way that you can just actually uh, uh, cover those things. And there are other kind of, uh, and this is quite interactive in a way that you have like the, the way that each objective is covered and what is the percentages and all those things. And a lot of a scoring system behind the scene, which is helping you to gauge or kind of uh, assess uh, the status that you're sitting in. But then this is actually a baseline, and then uh, we, we're going through uh, a bit of target things, which is actually a similar uh, dashboard has been created for the, uh, for the target profile. So uh, this time we're talking about the target profile and the, uh, the, the way that the objectives and, uh, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the controls are uh, supposed to be. So this is my future state type of thing. So we're talking about a bit of road mapping in here. And uh, the way that I'm going to achieve, like, again, out of 4,300, uh, 4, I'm going to achieve, like, uh, 1,700, for example. And if I go with a bit of more gap analysis in here, this is actually putting the things together and that uh, will help you to analyze the, the gap that you're going to achieve. So uh, maybe quickly, I just select one of those, uh, like, uh, security mission. Uh, objectives and if I click on that I would see what is my status and where where I'm going to uh, uh, work on like as in uh, do a bit of more uh, kind of development here or fill the gap and for instance uh, this is the most kind of uh, widest gap in here and I, if I click on there uh, everything is going to be just focused on that area and I see that for this particular uh, objective that I have these are the controls that I'm going to get out of like uh, like a development from tier one to tier two. So it's it's about planning. It's about like profiling and uh, like allocating the tiers in, in there. But then as you could see, everything is coming through the numbers or analytics or quite kind of easy to, uh, to, uh, to monitor and control and come up with a bit of more um, understanding than where am I and where I'm going to be. So and yeah, again, this is showing you a, 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 a big picture. Uh, this is my baseline, and this is my target state that I'm going to, to be. So uh, it's a bit of a development, of course, for the first uh, move, but uh, you, you can do multiple uh, like, uh, like uh, timelines or targets to achieve and go with those things. Uh, easily. So this is one of the use cases that we've, we've developed in uh, like with uh, Abacus and the way that you can just uh, do the things in here. This is for Nest, uh, but this could be for, uh, for the other uh, sort of uh, platform. So uh, these are actually the slides that we were, we were talking about, but in short, uh, we, we would have a chance. Yes, please. Just a quick time check, 10 minutes left. Yep, sure. I'm, I'm going to, to, to finish that. So I have one more slide, which is that I got a question in there that, okay, this is good. Uh, this is good to have like high level visibility as a start point for NIST CSF. But what about the information system? Uh, the thing that I'm going to cover in here is that uh, for sure you could do the same for the, uh, in a bit of more details like for the applications and the way that you can just do the job. And this one that I showed you is actually coming for the information system uh, modeling. So the approach is the same, the tool is doing the same for you guys, and uh, you have all those things uh, which could come up with like, uh, like the NIST 853 implementation, but this time for the IHCT or information system in place uh, with a bit of more uh, kind of uh, uh, the, the process which has been advised uh, with, the, with the framework in place. Yeah, so I think I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm actually uh, uh, good to go, and uh, well, yeah, uh, definitely a bit of time for uh, Q and A. There is any. Excellent, thanks, Jalal. And we might just go back to the last slide. So, um, uh, if anyone does have any questions, we're happy to take them now. But of course, if you'd prefer to 
have us answer those privately. We're more than happy to do that. Feel free to email Jalal. Um, he will try and get around to your questions as quickly as possible. <laughs> um, of course, uh, as you know, we're all, we are from a, a tool vendor, so we do have um, software as well. So if you'd like to try out Advocates, please feel free to download a 30-day trial. Um, and I know that is a bit of a shameless plug, but uh, hey, that's what we're here for sometimes. Um, but Daryl, did you want to hand over to you to do any questions or what's the best way to go forward? Sure, that's that's great, man. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, Jalal, as always, so much information being shared. Really appreciate it. And uh, I can say firsthand, having uh, used the tool recently, that uh, there's a lot of capabilities in it. So uh, yeah, do check it out, as Ollie mentioned, if you get a chance. Um, yeah, uh, just a quick note, uh, Liam, thanks for the plug about the book. It wasn't my book. I wish it was. Um, it was a review from a friend of mine of uh, Designed by Design for Digital by Jenny Ross and Martin Motha and Cynthia Beeth. And it's a fantastic book uh, on yeah. enterprise architecture um, to support organizations trying to become digital or, or go through digital transformations. If you want to check that out, check out the review and also check out the book because it's, it's great. So uh, any questions from the audience? Not seeing any hands up at this moment. So just a quick one from me about uh, the sort of, um, I suppose, data preparation uh, and controls required to be able to leverage the, uh, the platform. And I think to some extent, this sort of, this presentation fits well with stuff that uh, Asif was talking about earlier in the day. Uh, I know you guys weren't here, mm -hmm. but talking about getting the right data uh, and, uh, and making sure you've got the right processes around that. So any sort of commentary around getting the data into the tool uh, so that you can, and then managing it effectively so you can get the most out of it. Yeah, I mean, for, for that bit, uh, uh, well, if you're talking about the kind of a sort of the base, as in like for the server security data or the framework, which is because once we were talking about the server security, they're introducing a framework and in there we would have a list of all those uh, like controls and everything. So uh, normally the tool that we're introducing, like the, the Abacus, is coming with the framework out of the box. So you would have all those controls and the structures and everything in place. So this is actually uh, the, 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 the good part. Uh, and uh, like covering those, uh, like the, the frameworks like Sepsa, like, uh, like NIST and uh, some others. But then uh, this is also about the data inside the enterprise architecture. And yes, that's absolutely right. I mean, the way that we have like those, uh, like the, the components and the objectives and the, the things that we are going to, to, to do the like security checks against. Uh, for um, for uh, like for the applications that there are like, uh, I mean, the, the, the framework is introducing a process to evaluate or score the things like the uh, the uh, the assets like as in like a level for uh, the security check so uh, what i'm trying to say is that if i assume that we have enterprise architecture baseline uh, good to go like it's already list of applications list of servers list of objectives if we assume that we already have them um, I mean, uh, from cybersecurity perspective, uh, we have a, a proper set of data to use and map. And then about the mapping, it is a bit of more study there, a bit of more analysis in there uh, to do the mapping or a kind of uh, uh, find a way to map the things automatically if there is a possibility there. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this is always like uh, make a right connection or make a right sort of profiling and tiering in there is always a kind of uh, a big job to, to do and to go with, like to come up with uh, with uh, kind of uh, build up the baseline and uh, plan for like a uh, uh, plan for the future or roadmap of the cybersecurity implementation. Great, thanks, Joel. And uh, I see Sunil has raised his hand, Sunil. Uh, thanks, Jalal and Liam. Uh, that was really informative session. I just, just trying to understand how, uh, what a typical implementation time uh, uh, for a cybersecurity firm, uh, this NIST framework, and uh, and a tool is as good as it is maintained, right? I mean, how 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 it can be incorporated as a part of the service management, mm -hmm. IT service management process, so that it becomes a sort of necessary or mandatory uh, for all the teams to maintain it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the time is um, is a bit of more linked to the. Uh, 
uh, I mean, set up the base and put up the uh, like the uh, from architectural perspective, it's quite uh, straightforward and easy to set up because it's about like to uh, it's about like uh, build up a kind of a, a, like using the existing frameworks and a bit of mapping and things. So uh, we are talking about a, a very uh, kind of a, a quick uh, kind of uh, 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 achievement in, in a sense. But then it's uh, once it's coming through the bit of more uh, like uh, maintaining that or operational practices and also do the mapping and profiling. I guess it's also a bit linked to the preparedness of the enterprise to go with that. So. Uh, normally, it takes like in in practice, it takes like a, a period of time, like uh, uh, in in in, a, in in an order of months, or uh, maybe like uh, four to six months to just come up with the with the list of proper mapping and a bit of a list of uh, proper uh, kind of. Um, I mean, again, depends on the size of or uh, the uh, the the level of the details or the size of the controls that we're going to get. Uh, maybe it takes a bit of time to understand or come up uh, or wrap up the, uh, the the structure in place or implement the or do the mapping or profiling. But then once it has been happened, uh, maybe for maintaining that or a bit of more operation services and uh, those those type of practices, uh, again using the tool and the facilities or kind of those collaboration type of things which are uh, provided by the tool. It's 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 an ongoing things which is uh, it could be happen like very easily. Uh, like it's just uh, um, like continuous type of uh, implementation development uh, with uh, with the support of a bit of more sales services or a kind of uh, cyber security citizenship, if like, in a way that the people are coming and help us to uh, like the this, uh, the security thing uh, team and also the architect team to build up or maintain the uh, the involvement in there. So yeah, I mean. This is a, maybe a bit of a rough idea about the, the way that you could do the implementation. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. So in the interest of time, I think we uh, need to sort of wrap up there. Um, any last words from yourself, Liam and Jalal? Yeah, I'm good to go. <laughs> Thanks, Jalal. Uh, and thank you, Daryl. Um, I don't think we have any more last words, but just again, um, really appreciate the, the opportunity to present for everyone here. And uh, hopefully everyone's had some good takeaways from this. Again, if you do want to see more of uh, anything that we've shown today, please just let us know, drop an email through to Jalal. Um, you can also reach out to us via the website. We're more than happy to take on any further questions or send you any resources that we've developed as well. Great, yeah. thanks guys. And thanks to everybody else from the Evolution team that joined us today as well. I appreciate having you on the call. Yeah, thank um, you. Great. All right, we're going to move on to our next session now. Um, we have Tony Fitzgibbon, the CEO of DataZoo, and also Mamuna 